the Lord tonight. It's good to see everybody. I uh, look forward to tonight. Brother James Messer's here with us to deliver the message tonight. Uh, and look forward to hearing what God's put on his heart to share with us. So we're going to get started tonight and uh, welcome the ones that are watching via the internet. And it's good to have people in the house of the Lord and as we study God's word and, and lift up prayers to him. Let's start with a word of prayer this morning. This afternoon. Father God, we praise you. We thank you that uh, we are able to come to your house tonight, Lord. I pray that we would just let all of our cares about what went on today step aside. Let's put away what's coming up tomorrow. Let us truly focus upon you to worship you, Lord, because you're worthy of our worship and praise. God, you're worthy for us to hear your word spoken in truth. You're worthy of us singing praises to you. And Lord, you're so mighty and so majestic and so sovereign in all things, God, all of our prayers need to come to you and lay our burdens at your feet. So be with us tonight that we are uh, in accordance to your will, for your glory, and for your kingdom. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. All right, stand with me. We're going to sing one. I know you don't have your hymn books and you're going to fumble around, but we're singing each one. The family of God. Amanda and I say, hi the boys. 
I call quit and say how the kiddos, you know. But we were able to, they, uh, they went in a uh, house in Lake Martin and we were able to go up Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday and spend time with them. Don't get to see them a lot. And it was good. I, I tell you though, Toby, and that's all about that set by the no one having, but uh, Toby and I got spoiled. I mean, them grandkids wouldn't let us do anything. And uh, them kids wouldn't let us do anything. So I'm trying to talk about coming home and, and waiting on them, but it was real good. And then on Friday night, we had to go back to Coleman because my older granddaughter, Jimmy, daughter who will be graduating from Stanford uh, this school year, if they have it. Uh, he had a surprise engagement party. And we enjoyed that, but I looked at her and I said, too young, <laughs> you can't be that old, because it made me old. But God had been good, and, and uh, I have really enjoyed my family. And uh, I, we, um, I fell out about a four or five weeks ago, and they thought I had a stroke. Yeah, I'm talking too much, but they thought I had a stroke. And, and when I got to the room Toby was in, uh, she said, you've had a stroke. I said, what well, make you say that? She said, you can't talk. I said, woman, I've been living with you 52 years and haven't been able to talk. And she said, you're confused. I said, I've been living with you 52 years and been confused. And she said, well, you can't walk. I was, you would have thought I had Jack Daniels. But, uh, so I, I said, okay. So we went to the doctor and he thought I had a stroke and it wasn't a stroke. And now they're trying to find out what it is, so I do have a heart. I've been working on it for about a month, and and they did a, a MRI, and the doctor come out and he said, uh, "Tell me was sitting right there." He said, "Preacher, won't take it, job. You got a blue, beautiful, well-developed, working brain." And I said, "Did you hear that?" <laughs> So I know I got a brain and I got uh, a heart, but I'm, I'm concerned tonight about America. I, I, I love America. I'm not as proud of it as I used to be. Uh, things are going on that I never thought America would allow to go on. And things are happening that I thought would never happen. But tonight I want to say with you, I, I ask you a question. Who do you want? Any, something that we got so many bad ditch and so few telling people about Jesus. We got bad ditch to know how to gripe, complain, and fuss, and fight. But they don't know how to tell people about Jesus. If you ain't got one, you get one. And you pray for that one. And you witness to that one. And let God do what only God can do. And save that one. Well, we're going to look at several verses of scripture tonight. In the book of the Gospel of John, the 14th chapter. And I know you know this verse. But we're going to look at it anyhow. John 14, verse 6. Jesus said, Who said? Jesus. Now you don't have to listen to me. I'm nobody. But since Jesus is speaking, you better turn the radio on. Amen. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. And no man cometh to the Father but by me. Turn to John 11. Get back a little bit there. 
uh, John 11, and look with me at verses 25 and 26. Jesus said unto Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he was dead, yet shall I live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believe it thou this. My friend, let me tell you. We are witnessing today what a war is like without Jesus. We are seeing firsthand what a, a war is like without Jesus. It doesn't have any life because he's alive. Doesn't have any truth because he's the truth. We don't know how to go because he's the way. It can be resurrected only because he is the resurrection. He is the light. I want to tell you something. We are experiencing today a war without Jesus. Now we heard a lot about what matters. Black life matters. I'm not going to argue with that. That's true. God loved the black just like he loved the white. Yeah. White love is like matters. But what really matters? What really matters is Jesus. That's what really matters is Jesus. America needs to know that Jesus matters. Does he matter to you? Does he matter to your church? Does he matter to your family, your friends? My friend, let me tell you something. Most people today, or many people today, are not giving Jesus a part. We're not thinking about Jesus. And what America needs is to let Jesus matter. Oh, my friend, listen to me. What America needs for her birthday, and it's belated. Have you ever got a belated birthday gift? You know? Well, what America needs for a belated birthday? What America really needs is Jesus. You say, that's simple. <laughs> yeah, it is simple. Been simple before the foundation of the world. It's all about Jesus. It's not about me, it's not about you, it's not about them. It's about Jesus. It's about Jesus. My friend, listen to me. You can have the war, but give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. I never thought I would turn on my television and see what I'm seeing in America today. Oh, that can happen in Africa or Asia, but it can't happen in America. It is happening. It is happening. And the only way we're going to be able to go through this is Jesus. The gospel, the good news. We hear bad news, bad news, bad news, but the church needs to be saying the good news, the good news, the good news. Oh, my friend, listen to me. You can have this old war, but give me Jesus. What really make, what really matters is knowing and doing what is right by the sight of God. In the sight of God. The Lord will. And the Lord way and the Lord word and the Lord worship. That what matters. That what really, really matters. 
Oh, my friend, we need to let Jesus be who he is. We want him to be Jesus' Savior. Yeah, everybody, nobody won't go to hell. But he is the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the boss. He's the authority. We need to let him, as Americans, we need to let Jesus be who he is. The Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, America needs to be reformed. There are some things we need to, you know, we're not perfect. But I want to tell you something. The best protest is to call for reform according to God's holy word. Reform that God requires. Changes that God requires. That's what America needs. That's what I need. That's what you need. We need to care about what God does. Our nation, America, is in turmoil. Oh, I mean, it's a mess. And I tell people when I say that, and, and they're not even messers, you know. It's a mess. You don't know what to say. You don't know what to do. You don't know where to go. We don't know what not to go. It's, it's different than it's ever been. I pray for my grandchildren and my children because they're never going to know the America that you and I knew unless we let Jesus matter. Unless we let Jesus matter. COVID-19 is not the only uh, critic, the critical issue. I don't know what to do about COVID-19. I, I, don't, I don't want to catch it. I don't want to give it to you if I caught it. I don't want anybody else to catch it. But I want to tell you something. If I got to quit living, I might as well die. I might as well die. We're one nation. One nation under God. We're the land of the free. Oh, Cuba, we used to be. Everybody changing everything. I'm not too sure. Lou Holt said it. I, I'm not too sure that we ought to change that. We're supposed to be the land of the free. We're supposed to be the home of the brave. I don't think the land of brave is going to be the land of brave too much longer, but uh, we're supposed to be the, the land of the brave. We're scared to death. We're scared to death. Not only of the violence, we're scared of, of communication. We're scared to move. Oh, what does the world need? Is Jesus. We need Jesus. If we're going to be free, and free indeed, it's going to be because Jesus makes it free. We are, we're losing our freedom. We, we really are. We, we uh, they're under attack. Uh, we are in chaos. And the answer is Jesus. And, and he, he teaches. I love, by the way, he said y'all got out of late 30, is that right? <laughs> I love Sunday kids. I'm going to make some preachers mad. I don't get that any here tonight. But you can tell Denny that I said it. Uh, I, if, if I could not, and I mean really could not, not with a cutie, but I really couldn't go but to one part of the Sunday morning worship, it'd be Sunday. It'd be Sunday. 
See, we need the teaching. We need to learn of him. How can you do what he tells you to do if you don't know his teaching? We need his teaching. We need to look at the word of God and see that to disobey the law is sin and to obey the law is godly. It's godly. I may not have said it, but I'm 75. I've got to go or something. Might as well go a bit, you know. But I never thought I'd live in America where you could burn down a window to go preach. And you could cut a man's hair to go to jail. We got it all mixed up. It's in chaos. Because we don't know or we're not putting into practice the teaching of the Word of God. The teaching of Jesus. Oh, my friend. Don't tell me who said it's political. No, this is biblical. Don't tell me what we need to do to defend, or defend, defend our policemen. The Bible said we need to support our government. Except when they disobey God. And then we can stand up. But I want to tell you tonight, I'm thankful for every police officer. Oh, there's some bad ones. There's some bad preachers, too. There's some bad businessmen. <laughs> Don't throw the whole bucket out. We ought to love and honor and respect and support our laws, our law people. I'm not bragging on me, but the other day, uh, I don't forget the whole story. You do that when you get old. But uh, I went somewhere and, and saved 10 or $12 or whatever go by. So, no, it's more than that. Say, say, about twenty. And so we went to neighbors. I send them a bill for that ad, but we went to neighbors to eat. And when we walked in, there were two policemen standing there. And God said, "Save you a little money, didn't I? You buy them." I went over and told them I respected them and appreciated them, and they began to cry. I said, by the way, you learned to pay them. And when we were praying, Toby and I, I lifted up my eyes, and they wasn't for foreign. They wasn't pretending. I saw them, and they bowed their head and thanked God for their food. We need to support our police. Our law officers. When they're wrong, they're wrong. But they're more right than they are wrong. We need to understand that. Well, believe it or not, I did got to the sun. What matters? I'm going to tell you three things that matters. Number one, Jesus matters in our heart. I won't tell you something. I, I believe I'm, I'm preaching to the choir. But I won't tell you something, my friend. I'm not talking about living a good life. I'm not talking about church membership. I'm not talking about being dipped in water. I'm not talking about quitting something, man. Talking one time, said, I know I'm saved, preacher. I said, how do you know you're saved? He said, I quit smoking. Now, smoking make it smell like you've been to hell, but it won't, you know. But we think because we quit something or, or do something, we'll, no, it's more than quitting or beginning. 
Listen, my friend. It's more than religion. It's a relationship. We repent. And if we don't repent, you're going to perish. We repent, and when we repent, we can ask Jesus to come into our heart. And when Jesus come into our heart, things are different now. Something happened to us when we gave our life to Jesus. And people know he's in our heart. We need Jesus in our heart. I think we got far too many members. God forgive me if I'm wrong. Who don't? Good people, good members, tithers. But I want to tell you something. It matters most of all if Jesus in your heart. Do you have a relationship with Jesus? Do you really know him as the King of kings and the Lord of lords? Oh, I suggest to you tonight that you let Jesus come into your heart. We need him in our hearts. Without wit, we'll never be in heaven with him. The second thing, we need him in our homes. I mean, listen, what the Bible is read and studied. <laughs> I don't know. By the way, I, I wear dead in the uh, uh, To the bank robber went in the bank and, and he gave a note to the teller and he said, this is a tick-up. And so the teller gave a note back and said, smile and straighten your tie. We got you on the camera. <laughs> Won't tell you, God got you on the camera. You better straighten your tie. Better straighten and tie. Uh, but no, mama and daddy and grandma and grandpa never read and study the word of God with their youth. No wonder the youth think the church is un unnecessary. Because mama and daddy and grandma and grandpa never taught it in their home how necessary it was and taught it to him from the word of God. Our children have taught his word. Taught about his salvation. Taught about his teachings. Now talk about who Jesus is and, and what Jesus had done. Talk about the cross, talk about the blood. Somebody said, well, we're not talking about blood anymore. That's what's wrong. We're not talking about blood enough. The precious blood of Jesus makes a difference in our lives because he's in our heart. And if he's in our lives and in our heart, hey, we should teach him to our children in our homes. Somebody said, well, you know, we kick the Bible. We kick God out of the public too. We sure did, but we kicked them out of our home before we kicked them out of our school. I could embarrass me some good people here tonight. Do you teach your children, your grandchildren about Jesus? Is Jesus in the midst of your home? Is Jesus the head of your home? Oh. Uh, Matter. If you read Proverbs 22, it said, raise up a child and he should go. Train up a child. Are we doing that? In Deuteronomy, and I want to read that. That's going to take a minute. But turn to Deuteronomy 6. I, I, want, I want to read that. You ain't going to do nothing but go home and watch television and get upset and, and all like that. Uh, but but uh, I... I, I I didn't can even find Deuteronomy. That's, that's getting old. Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter. 
Listen at what the word of God said. Beginning with verse 4. Listen at it. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is what? He's the Lord. I mean, over and over and over, they talk about uh, he's the Lord. <laughs> he's the only God and so forth. But anyhow, the five. And they shall love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might or strength. My friend, let me tell you, God looking on the inward part. And we are to love him with all our heart, inward. All our soul, inward. And with all our strength. God looking upon the heart. But anyhow, that, I gotta get on here so I can let y'all out by 8 30. Then what it says? Verse 7 says, And I shall teach them diligently unto thy children. Oh, we talk football. By the way, you know one thing that by which you taught me? I can't live without football. I thought I couldn't. And we can all, all get used to it, I'm afraid. But, but diligently unto thy children. And so talk of them when thy set it in the house, and when thy walk it by the way, and when thy lie it down, and when thy wise it up. We don't have home like that anymore. We said, with nobody but me and my wife, I'd tell home. We don't have home like that anymore. Listen, and I shall bound them for a sign upon thy hand, and I shall be as thoughtly between thy eyes, and I shall write them upon the post of thy heart, house and on the gate. And it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought them thee into the land where he swore unto thy fathers, to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, to give thee great and godly cities, would thy build it not. Oh, uh, you better hope I don't try to preach that. I did hope you heard it. You heard it. Oh, my friend. Somebody had said, and I wish I had said it. I really do, Alan Nathan. I wish I had said this. We got enough sense to say it, but I'm glad I went. He said, to teach a child to count is important. But to teach a child what counts is necessary. Let me tell you, we let our kids and our youth grow up, and we didn't want to put the gospel down. We didn't want to be fanatical. You know what a fanatic is, don't you? That's somebody who loves Jesus more than you do. But, you know, we, we don't want to do that. And we let them go and they don't appreciate the word of God. They don't appreciate the truth of God. They don't appreciate the love of God. That's another sermon. Another sermon. And last but not least, he matters in our hearts. He matters in our homes. And he matters in our homeland. He matters in our homeland. If we're not one nation under God, we will not survive. And if you, if we are one nation under God, we would obey God. No matter what it costs. No matter what anybody else says, we would obey the teaching of the word of God. I'm going to read you some scriptures uh, from the uh, living translation. Uh, it did, it, I mean, it doesn't change the meaning of the King James, and I'm a, King James man, but this helped me understand it better. Listen to what he said in Proverbs 14 
34 and 35. God didn't make a nation great, but sin is a great did great to any people. A king rejoices in wise servant, but is angry with those who do disgrace him. Woo! Listen. Listen to Proverbs 28, 4 and 5. To reject the law. Woo! To reject the law is to pray the wicked. To obey the law is to fight the wicked. Evil people don't understand justice. Have you seen that lately? I mean, we got some politicians. They don't have a, they don't have a clue what justice is. They don't have a clue what the law is. But listen, evil people don't understand justice. But those who follow the Lord understand completely. Oh. Look in Proverbs 28, 6 and 7. Blessed be the poor and honest. Better to be poor and honest than to be dead honest and rich. Young people who obey the law are wise. Those with wild friends bring change to their parents. Uh, listen to Proverbs 11, 14. Without wide leadership, and I won't tell you something, I ain't telling you who to vote for, but I'm telling you, you better get yourself to the polls in November. This is the most important election you have ever been around for. And we think it's a mess now. We let the wrong person be elected. And it's going to be a big cake what it is now. And uh, without wide leadership to make them fall, their safety in having many advisors. My friend, let me tell you something. We need Jesus. We need Jesus in our homeland. The Bible said a nation that forgot God to be turned into I won't tell you something. America is hellish. What's going on is hellish. What's going on is detracting and losing, stealing. And we're trying to make it all right. You never make breaking the law legal. But anyhow, that's another sermon. Well, we need them in our homelands. We sure do. Don't let the mob rule. Let Jesus, the master, rule. You know what the mob did? They killed Jesus. I mean, he allowed it to happen. But they killed Jesus. They didn't kill the white of old. They didn't, didn't like him. They didn't believe him. And the mob crucified him. That's all I want to say. We can't let the mob rule. We better let the mat rule. We better let the mat rule. Oh, my friend. Listen. The world just don't realize that when you go against the law, that will go against God. Oh, my friend, listen to me. The word transgress and refer to deliberate, rebellious act. What's going on? Well, I go on and on, but I'll tell you what, I'll be back next Wednesday night unless Jesus comes and then somebody else can do it. <laughs>
Uh, you know, it could come. You would have could. But I, I will tell you this. And then I let our leader lead us. I got where every letter I write that I close it this way. Revelation 22 20. It says, Even so come, Lord Jesus, at the answer, at the solution. And I don't believe, I used to say, I'd be dead and gone when that happened, but I believe I'm going to be alive and grown up. I believe it coming that quick. Oh, they let too many signs at the time. We're so proud, we're so boastful, we're so sinful. And, and I'm going, I am going to quit now, but let me say this to you. The people who are doing what we don't think they ought to do are not our enemies. The devil is our enemy. Flesh and blood is not our enemies. It's the devil. So you turn up for Jesus because he's the only one that can handle the devil. Amen. And if Jesus comes before next Wednesday, Steve will do prayer meeting. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Messer. What a message. What a message to know Christ and know him in our heart, in our family, in our homes. Uh, prayer requests tonight. Um, I'll read the ones that are on the list. Uh, and if you know anything about it, Miss Mamie, do you know anything about Donnie Andrews? Donnie Andrews? Andrews? Okay. Uh, Mary Bringhurst had a stent put in her, her leg, uh, and uh, I hadn't heard anything. Jerry, you heard anything on her while well, she's... Okay. Be in prayer for Miss Mary. Eric and Angie, are, are, they're battling. Angie had COVID, and they're battling that. Uh, Miss Helen Timmons is on the prayer list. Don Lackey. Uh, I heard last night in our Sunday school class that they had found where the bleed was. Is that true? And they will be able to collect and fix that. So praise God. All right. Is there any more we need to add to our list tonight? Anybody got any new ones? Yes, sir. We need to put all our churches in Tillman's Corner. Tillman's Corner. I got, I got a lot of cases. They're hooked. All right. Anybody else? Aubrey Goldman having surgery Tuesday, removing cysts on his neck. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Any unspokens? Amen. Amen. God is faithful. God is good. God hears the cries of his children. And he answers the cries of his children. So let's go to him tonight in prayer and asking God to look after the ones on his prayer list and, uh, and watch over us through the week. And that we may have been challenged tonight about where we have God and where we recognize God in our lives, that we would apply it to our, to our lives and to our families. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Mac, I'll ask you to come up and pray for us, please. your house to study your word dear God and to fellowship with brothers and sisters in Christ and our father we ask that you look after our nation dear God you know the outcome of all this situation that's going on dear God you've seen this on many occasions before and and you handled that situation and I pray that we'll just turn it over to you and as brother wrestlers told us dear God that we need Jesus in our heart and dear God it it's our responsibility out there to go about as your your witnesses to tell others about you and to share your love that Jesus has given to us and to enter peace, dear God, most of all that we have 
that others do not have, dear God. And, and I'm so sad for them, dear God, because they don't know what they're missing. They're lost. They're just fighting with themselves and with the rest of the world, dear God. They're, they're confused, and dear God, only you can straighten that out. And we pray that you'll move into their hearts, dear God. And, and please help us to be the disciples once again that you'd have us to be, dear God, as we go out. And Father, I want to thank you for the, the, what we consider to be simple blessings, dear God, just the ability to, to walk and talk and to see the creation that you have made for us, dear God. And, and dear God, it's so wonderful. And, and so many people just would cherish the opportunity to walk, dear God. And to all the things that we've been given material-wise, it makes our life so much easier. Dear God, we thank you for those things. And we so often take them for granted. And dear God, we apologize to you for, for that, dear God, of course. It's, it's through your love for us, dear God, and, and we don't show that, dear God, that love back to you as we should. And we pray these things, dear God, through your precious son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, word of announcement, uh, you heard today that brother, uh, the Governor K. Ivey has issued a mask deal uh, in religious settings. We don't have to wear a mask in here, but if you feel comfortable wearing masks, please wear a mask. If you don't feel comfortable wearing a mask, don't wear a mask. Keep social distance. This COVID-19 is real. It's still going around. Uh, but my hope's not in COVID-19. My hope's in the Lord, and he can take care of us. So see you Sunday. Brother uh, Dustin will be preaching Sunday. Be in prayer for Brother Dennis and Darlene as they're still on vacation. And we look forward to Brother Muster coming back next Wednesday night. Good night.